大家好，欢迎你们我的频道，我是美塔特龙。今天我们一起学中文。So Chinese is Mandarin Chinese or standard Mandarin the same as the Beijing language or accent? Hello, number ones, and welcome to Metronomes Academy, the channel where we explore how to learn languages in the most fun and effective way possible. Okay, so let's say that you have decided, hey, I want to learn Chinese. Well, first and foremost, you need to decide what type of Chinese you want to learn, because there are lots of different varieties, lots of different possible languages that are spoken within and outside of China that differ between themselves so much that oftentimes they're even not mutually intelligible. To add insult to injury, even if you have a clear idea, well, I don't want to study, say, Cantonese. I want to study. Mandarin. Even when we say Mandarin, remember that there is a difference between standard Chinese, which is usually referred to as Putonghua or the common language, which is the kind of Mandarin that is normally taught to students, taught in classroom, used in movie dubs, and also used by news reporters, and other varieties of Mandarin that are still spoken in the Republic of China, and not to mention Taiwanese, which is also a type of Mandarin. In other words, if we have to do technical Putonghua or the standard language is Mandarin, but not all Mandarin is Putonghua. Confused yet? Let me fix it. Let's say that you did start looking into learning Mandarin. Maybe you're starting to frequent a class, and then they give you a book. Now it doesn't matter what book you have. Like for example, this one specifically is Il Cinese per gli Italiani, so Chinese for Italians. Chinese title will be Itali Ren Xue Han Yu, so Italians study Chinese. This being the book that they use at the La Sapienza, so the university in Rome in Naples. When I was studying, we were using a different book, which is called Han Yu Jiao Cheng. It doesn't really matter what book you're using. The majority of these books will say this: the pronunciation of Putonghua or standard Chinese is based on the phonology of the Beijing dialect. So, Putonghua and Beijinghua are they the same? No, simply because standard Mandarin Putonghua is based on the phonology of Beijinghua. It doesn't automatically mean that they are the same. It is based on it, but they are still very different in terms of word usage, in terms of pronunciation, phonology, and morphology. Of course, on this video, I'm going to present you with some examples. But before we do that, another thing that we can absolutely address here is: well, once we have established that standard Mandarin Putonghua and the Beijing accent are different. Which one should you learn? We will address this on the second section of this video, so make sure to watch until the end because it's going to be great. And how are? Okay. So first and foremost, Putonghua or the Mandarin that you study at school is definitely closer to the northern variety of Chinese accents. One of the characteristics of standard Mandarin being the usage of the so-called Erhua or the er sound at the end of words, which is almost non-existent in southern accents, with exceptions such as number two. A few examples would be the word for where and there, which in standard are pronounced. Nar and nar, with the only difference being the tone, third and fourth. With that being said, even though a lot of words in standard Mandarin or Putonghua do retain this arhua and make full usage of it, they are not as abundant as they would be if you were to speak in an actual Beijinghua or in an actual Beijing accent. A few examples could be the word for new word, which is shengzi, in standard becomes shengzi. In Beijinghua, the word to chat, liao tian, in standard, and liao tiar in Beijing accent. Another example: flower in standard is hua, whereas some speakers in Beijing will say hua. You get the point. Now these are all adjective situations in which you simply add the r sound. But other times, what happens is that it is a r hua in Beijing accent has a sort of reductive effect in the sense that it sort of Cancels out sections of words. For instance, I told you in standard, 我告诉你 and in the Beijing accent, 我告诉你 And another usage of arhua within Beijing accent is the complete substitution of words. For instance, standard, 我是 which becomes 我 and standard, I don't know, 不知道 which becomes 不知道我不知道 Another sound that you will find in Beijing accents and in a few others, but definitely do, it's not present, neither used in standard Mandarin, is the th sound, like in the English word mother. Yeah, I know, mind blowing. Here's how it happens: some Beijing speakers will substitute the sound z with a th, 
Now, these are just a few of the many, many differences in accent and even word usage between standard Mandarin and Beijinghua. So even though standard Mandarin is absolutely based, phonologically speaking, on the pronunciation of the Beijing accent, speaking with a Beijing accent is still very different from speaking with a standard Potonghua Mandarin accent. Having established that, which one should you learn? Now, similarly to my suggestion, which I have already given for the video, should you learn standard Italian or a regional variety or dialect, the same thing applies here. If you are learning Mandarin because you want to work with it, because you want to teach it, or because you want to be able to communicate with as many people as possible, go for standard Mandarin. On the other hand, if you have connections to people in Beijing, if you have friends, a wife, or you're planning on moving into actual Beijing city, then learning the Beijing accent would also be a viable choice. With that being said, keep in mind that if you do learn a very thick Beijing accent, uh, you might have problems communicating with people from other areas who might not understand you. Another difference is the way people in Beijing pronounce the W sound. So the W sound is usually taught in standard Mandarin in a similar way to how it's pronounced in English, as a W, for example, Wang, War, Wen. But people with a Beijing accent will pronounce it like a V. Wang, Var, Wen. In my opinion, this is a little bit of a simplification of the sound, particularly because of the fact that oftentimes people in Beijing tend to speak very fast, and I think that as you speak faster and faster, it is only natural to change a W into a V. But then again, that's just my opinion. Now, as someone who has studied Mandarin for many years in his life, one of the major differences in terms of feel, the way it makes me feel when I hear a standard Mandarin accent and a Beijing accent, is that while I really like the Beijing accent and I find it very characteristic, it gives me a feeling of, oh wow, that is a true Beijing. The feel of something very regional and so specific. On the other hand, I find standard Mandarin to be more beautiful to the ear. So if you're reading poetry or if you have like a very highly educated statesman in a movie set in during a Chinese dynasty, or some kind of very wise master, I think it sounds so much better when they pronounce everything according to standard Mandarin, which, even though I like both, tends to be my favorite pronunciation. So if I'm watching a film, which I often do and I always suggest you to do, uh, if I'm watching a film and I see a character speaking with a very strong, thick Beijing accent, it sounds fun to me. But if I'm watching a wise master, martial arts master, and they speak in the purest form of Mandarin, it just suits them so much better. And it gives me a feeling of, or, if you will. So, if you want people to think, wow, this guy sounds just like a Beijinger, learn the Beijing accent. But if you want people to say, wow, this guy, when he speaks, is so proper, and his Mandarin is so correct, and so easy to understand, then go for standard Mandarin or Putonghua. All right, noble ones, but I hope you enjoy this, and as usual, thank you very much for joining Metatron's Academy.